there isn't much I can say about 2020 and 2021 that you haven't heard before. And it was no different for us in the Belize learning community. We entered this year knowing we were in a pandemic, but we didn't know how or if it was going to end. When it came to our lear learning community, we usually travel at the end of December and we entered the fall knowing that there was a chance this wouldn't happen. As the fall progressed, it became clear that it wasn't going to happen. So we regrouped and we decided to delay our trip until May. As the spring progressed, once again, it became clear that we might not be able to make this trip. A fateful day came and we had to make the decision. We were not going to travel. Now this had several implications other than us just not going to Belize. As a fellow, I asked myself, would the students still engage in this rich learning opportunity? Would we still be able to help our community partners because they depend on us for so much? We told the students and I sat back largely waiting to see how they would react. I think once the initial disappointment subsided, I was pleased to see that our students managed to pick things up and really run with them. Last year, we did go to Belize. And while I was there, I think one of the most rewarding things I saw was the ability of our students to collaborate. The nature of what we do here is everybody helps everybody. Whether you're an expert or not, you become an expert on everybody's project and you help them so that we can help others. I wondered if this would be something we actually saw in the virtual environment. And sure enough, it did. Literally, the exact same day we told the students that they were not going to be traveling, I saw them pick each other up, come with all kinds of wonderful suggestions on how to help each other and how to complete their projects remotely. The idea was, how could we still learn? And more importantly, how could we still help our community partners? And as you will hear from the speakers to come, all kinds of creative and innovative things were discovered in order for us to still improve the human condition in Belize. Belize is a land of mountains, wetlands, and tropical jungles located just south of Mexico and east of Guatemala. Located deep within the 260,000 acre Rio Bravo Conservation and Management Area lays the Hillbank Field Station. Hillbank is McMaster's team's home while in Belize. The Hillbank Field Station and the Rio Bravo are managed by our longest and most trusted partner, Program for Belize. Throughout the past 16 years, over 165 Defiance College students and faculty fellows have implemented 170 community-based research projects in the Orange Walk, Corozal, and Belize districts. Students from all majors have completed projects in Belize, but to give you a glimpse of what we get to do and who we partner with, let me tell you about a few projects that have grown over many years. Science students working with Friends of the New River and Program for Belize have provided water quality data on the New River and New River Lagoon. Critical freshwater sources. Business students have worked with women's artisans groups from Rancho Dolores and with women restaurant owners and farmers in San Carlos to help them become more financially stable. Education students have worked with the August Pine Ridge School and many small village schools in setting up active learning camps and professional workshops for teachers to improve education. McMaster Scholars has even started up a preschool that has been up and running for over five years now. Throughout all these collaborative community-based research projects in Belize, McMaster Fellows and Scholars have directly impacted over 11,000 people. In the time spent working in Belize, the relationships we as student scholars and faculty fellows have has impacted our lives significantly. We trust one another while providing each other with the information we need to continue moving projects forward year after year. In 2005, when the initiative began, water quality research in northern Belize was one of the major projects. The New River Lagoon was the primary focus of the water testing of early initiatives. The initial purpose of this research was to simply test waterways which had never been continually and consistently tested before. The program for Belize has continued to request that the lagoon be tested yearly. 
From 2010 to 2012, some McMaster scholars and fellows found high nitrate levels in the New River Lagoon at the surface level. This caused the McMaster School to begin testing subsurface water to determine if the water below the surface was still suitable for drinking. The scholars have also sought to figure out if high nitrates high nitrates were just a result of land runoff after the rainy season or if it was an indicator that the lagoon water quality was declining. The lagoon has since returned to good condition. In 2012, McMaster scholars began to test the wells and cisterns of San Carlos and some of the surrounding villages yearly. This testing was eye-opening to the community partners as it was determined that many uncased wells were unsafe to drink from. In 2017, the program for Belize and Friends of the New River contacted the McMaster School to determine why mass fish kills were occurring in the New River, which is connected to the New River Lagoon. The river had never been consistently tested by McMaster scholars before. The community wants a reason for poor water quality to be found, and this is only possible with continuity of data. Many of this year's projects were continuations of previous projects that our community partners trust the McMaster School to move forward with. Our projects, however, did not go as originally planned because of COVID-19 bringing traveling constraints along with new challenges for us and our community partners. The overall challenge that our team faced throughout the course of the year was COVID-19. The pandemic made our hard work and effort in planning to perform our projects in Belize uncertain. As a team, we collaborated and came up with ways to manage the challenge of not knowing if we were going to travel. As a second year scholar, I used the relationships that I created on the previous trip to encourage me and drive me to get my research done and have my project prepared with the expectation that we were going to travel. With my optimism, I also kept in mind that my connections built from the last trip will facilitate the adaptation of my project in the case of not traveling. Liv, since you are a first year scholar on the Belize team, how did you deal with this uncertainty? Well, since I was a first year scholar, I did not have the relationships to back up on and to motivate me. In order to stay motivated, I just kept telling myself to have faith and that no matter what happened and if we were not able to travel, we would still find a way to positively impact the people in Belize and our community partners. Once the final decision was made to cancel the trip, there were mixed emotions within the group. As a team, we were able to adapt and figure out ways on how we can move forward with our projects. My first reaction to the decision was overwhelmed and anxious on how I will be able to do face-to-face -face training for the several sections of emergency response in my project. I was able to step back, analyze, and adjust my project into a manageable format to present remotely to my community partners. Although it was upsetting to find out that we were not traveling, I realized that anything I can do to positively impact my community partners while leaving this project in the right direction for future years was a success. I'm the type of person that can find positive in any type of situation. I quickly became excited for the challenge that we are going to face. The challenge to me meant new opportunities, opportunities that no other Belizean learning community had had. I was excited that no matter what the circumstances were, we were able to find ways to continue to help our community partners. I was also excited because this opportunity meant we had more time to focus on our projects and strengthen them for coming years. My experience as a first year scholar is very different than I had anticipated it to be. I've learned so many things throughout this year, but most importantly, I've learned that you have to be adaptable in all situations. In times like these, it's very easy to be selfish and think of all the reasons you can be upset that we're not traveling. But thanks to the help of my fellow scholars, I've realized that our community partners and the people in Belize are much more important than ourselves. The reason that we are going is to help them and not to gain our own experience. And although it is hard to think of that, it's what's important. At the beginning of the year, everyone had different projects and different goals that we were focusing on. Although we knew what each of our group members were doing, our goals were very individualized to our project. We had this idea of how it would play out on the ground and we seemed set in our ways. When we got the news that we would not be traveling, our goals needed to change and for some of us, our heads were spinning. 
We were very nervous, myself in particular, on how everything was going to get down there and how everything was going to play out. After sitting down and finding our focus again, we came to the conclusion that our goals, our main goals, were still the same. The first two being to improve the human condition for Belizeans and respond to the community requests and needs. Once we brought our focus back to what all started our individual projects, it made it a little less nerve wracking. Our last two goals were to serve as a bridge for future collaboration and to solidify our team with these efforts. Once we got over our nerves, we, re we had to make many adaptations as a result of the pandemic. We all really came together as a team to help everyone adapt their projects to still make an impact with not being able to travel this year. Within this year, we were only able to meet twice in person, but we did not give up and we overcame the odds of having to be virtual. Not only did everyone figure out their projects, but we all combined sources to have many different contacts in Belize for our projects. This was important because we did not separate to figure everything out and disconnect. We really just put our heads together and worked as a group. Many of us were motivated to accept the challenge to make our projects work in the circumstances that we were given. However, we need to continue to figure out how to operationally achieve our goals within our projects. I'm an operational person. I see the vision, but want to know how it works. The question posed to us as scholars is how do we make our visions a reality in order to achieve our objectives? We as a learning community had to co collectively evaluate each individual project to find the true purpose and impact they have on our community partners. As a group, we had to come together and figure out how we were going to achieve what seemed like at the time visionary goals regarding our projects. As a direct response to our visionary ideas, we came together and to the conclusion that we had to create a response on how we would achieve our goals. The goals we created are impl improving the human condition, responding to the community's needs and requests, serving as a bridge to future collaboration, and solidifying the team while collaborating on these efforts. Once goals were established, strategies were created. Then we as a learning community came up with the following strategies. Develop a plan for improving communication with partners in Belize, developing an effective project delivery without being on site, and developing a direction for moving projects forward during the 2021-2022 year. Communication has been one of the most challenging tasks we have been faced with. Therefore, we started with what we knew. In other words, the concrete community partners we have. We made a list of community partners we could get a hold of. For example, the Orange Walk District Education Office and the program for Belize. This is different from past years because we used to make the online connections to set up meetings and the overall collaboration was held in person. We then determined the essence of each project in terms of what each individual project can accomplish and what the projects look like from a distance. For example, for trainings we are making videos and for education projects we are no longer putting on an all-day camp. Instead, we are sending learning materials for Belizean educators to utilize. After establishing the essence of each project, we then focused on the utilization of communication to make our projects beneficial for next year and how we are laying the foundation for future projects. Like many of my fellow scholars have pointed out, the unprecedented situation posed a challenge for, my, for the team and this, and this is evident in the challenge of reaching out to our community partners. We as learning community still owe our community partners the outcomes and responses produced through our projects. Even though we may not be on the ground working, our projects still must be conducted in order to achieve the true essence of each individual product, project. The true challenge that we as a learning community faced was trying to build open communication lines with our community partners in Belize. At first, the task seemed daunting, much like, much like when the rug gets pulled from underneath you. We were tasked with trying to reach out to our community partners without having a strong, solid, and reliable form of communication. This is a challenge that I and each scholar of our learning community faced. And each of us were eager to accomplish this task. The only struggle is that Belize is thousands of miles away from, the, from Defiance, Ohio. We were tasked with this project without having the materials that were needed to build a communication bridge between us and our community partners. However, I believe that we have the proper mindsets to tackle this problem and successfully make connections with each of our community partners. Even though we will not be conducting the projects on the ground in Belize, we are determined to reach all of our project goals collectively as scholars. 
in order to still fulfill our promises to our community partners in Belize. As a research assistant, I've gotten the opportunity to work with some pretty amazing students. When my scholars heard that traveling and collaborating in person was not going to happen this year, everyone had a mix of different emotions. But they used this new challenge as motivation to work even harder to come up with a plan to continue their projects. It was impressive to see how well they worked together as a team virtually. Within a two week period, they went from being scatterbrained to having a clear plan for what needed to get done. I've seen them come together and work as a team to help each other with the success of their projects. Because of that, they are a completely different team now than when I joined a few months ago. I'm grateful for this opportunity because it has helped me grow as a student and a person. Being a McMaster Scholar three times and traveling to Belize twice does get you excited for a third time. But when the pandemic hit and we were not going to be traveling, it hit home. At first, most of us were unaware of how our projects were going to play out. But once we collected our thoughts, we were confident that we could achieve our initial end goal, completing each student scholar's project to its entirety. Since then, our team has grown in many areas, including communication, adaptability, collaborating, and critically thinking. Despite the situation, we have been able to make the most of it as a team. This year's circumstances have given our team the courage, motivation, and drive to continue moving projects forward the next year. Being a second year Belize McMaster Scholar, when asked to reflect on the past year within the learning community, I often find myself using the phrase, finding comfort in discomfort. This year has been a whirlwind of events, from reframing coursework to analyzing how projects will look in the future. As I reflect personally, I've been able to identify the skills I have enhanced while taking on my project during the pandemic. This year, my project is correlated with creating agriculture lesson plans that are framed around common course subjects and include scaffoldings to meet the needs of all learners. This year, I have been able to strengthen my adaptability skills as a professional when discussing our community partners. I have created a pathway that are both accessible and culturally appropriate for Belizeans in terms of relaying my project from afar. Maintaining communication with our community partners is vitally important to the current and future successes of all projects within our learning community. Many may view this past year as a roller coaster ride of events, which in the long run, it has been. But if you take time to reflect, many lessons and skills have been put in the spotlight during this time. And I believe those skills and lessons have only been highlighted and challenged through my time as a returning scholar. I have been able to grow both individually and as a team member in terms of collaboration and effectiveness. And I think we all can agree that we have found comfort and discomfort and have come out on top as individuals and as a learning community. Hey, Mia Matthews here. I am an associate fellow to the Belize Learning Community and have been absolutely enthralled by watching these students grow and mature through this process of research during this academic year. I want to encourage you to check out the link in the description box below to navigate over to our virtual poster session platform where each of our scholars have uploaded posters that go into further detail about their specific projects. In addition, by each poster, there's a button that says chat with presenter. If you click that button, you will be able to chat with each of the scholars in real time about their specific projects. You can ask them any questions you have or make comments about their research. Really, we would just love to engage with you right now, today. So click that link below and we so look forward to chatting with you about the amazing accomplishments of our Belize scholars this year.